Good evening and welcome to the Phil Waybright Gymnasium here down here in Argus where we are going getting ready for the Argus Lady Dragons to take on the Washington, South Bend, Washington, what are they, Cougars? Panthers. You're always right there. Panthers. <laughs> I knew it was some type of a cat. <laughs> um, if you are just now joining us, um, we did come in at the very last point of the uh, JV game and uh, uh, the gymnasium fit is any any gives us any type of what the night's going to be like it was electrifying I mean I haven't heard gymnasium noise like that since uh, what was it the uh, 2016 girls basketball team yeah. was going down going down state down Indy. so uh, we will be uh, I'm joined here tonight with Zach Schaefer um, him and I have been doing the, all the volleyball games so far this year. I know we haven't done all of the home games. Uh, we, uh, I know we missed, what was it, Thursday night because the uh, boys' soccer was having their senior night. And then Friday night, uh, we had the girls' soccer uh, for senior night. And then tonight, we have one crew here in the gym getting ready for uh, senior night for volleyball while we have another crew out in the soccer scoreboard or, uh, stand. Uh, doing the, the first game of the boys sectional. Um, have you heard anything, Zach, on what the score is? Yeah, I haven't gotten anything about it. All right. So I, and I know it's, tonight is only one game, and uh, it's boys, and then they're off again until Wednesday. Uh, they're playing Culver. I know during the regular season, um, we ended up winning 8-0, uh, which is what the score was at halftime. Um, so I have not heard. We'll try to find out. But I know that we are getting ready for senior night. And it looks like they're getting ready to start with their first senior here. I'll try to read along with our public address announcer here in the gymnasium as it will be a little difficult to hear him. So I've got the senior night uh, recognition paper here in front of me. All the girls are asked to fill out a few different lines about what they plan to do here in the future and some other things you'll hear as we get going here. Looks like they're having a little microphone issue, trying to get that thing fired up, but we do have four seniors to recognize as part of the class of 2020. While we're waiting for that to get started up, I know a couple Thursdays ago, I think, is when the soccer team was playing Culver and we were unable to broadcast because yes. of that game going on. It was too bad because that was a great game here, and I kind of thought about you during the match as I'm watching, thinking, oh, Phil, I wish we could have been on the broadcast. Uh, the girls played Elkhart Christian here in the gym and won that one a uh, very close contest. It was 26-24, 25-23, and then separated in the third and won 25-18 in straight sets. Um, but while it was a straight set win, uh, it was a good Elkhart Christian team. It was just really one of the better games I've seen our girls play uh, definitely this season. And last year, that was probably the best win that the volleyball program has had in quite some time. Uh, last year, we went up to Elkhart Christian and were able to beat uh, the Eagles up at their place in five sets. And that also was very, very closely contested throughout each set. And I believe last year, Elkhart Christian, when we went up there, we were a 500 team. So that was a, a very quality win for us. Um, so we are coming off of, of that match. It does seem like a little while ago. They had a bit of a break and played last Thursday against the Culver Girls Academy. Did lose that one, uh, three sets to zero. Of course, that's a very difficult opponent in Culver Academy, just down the road. Well, I remember I remember that night that uh, you guys played the Elkhart Christian because uh, uh, Amy Stone and I were out there out there broadcasting the, uh, the soccer game and we kind of looked at each other and go, it'd probably be better if we were, if we actually weren't the, inside the gymnasium, be a little bit more exciting. It looks like Corey Phil, our announcer, is just going to use his pastoral voice <laughs> and uh, just yell it out here in the gymnasium. We're unable to get the mic going, but uh, again, I will read it along. I'll try to time myself up with him here in just a little bit and introduce our first senior. We have Kaylee Bradley coming up. Number 14, Kaylee Bradley. She is an outside hitter, and she is the daughter of Jim and Melissa Bradley. 
Her future plans are to go to college for digital marketing, then live life. Her most memorable moment is Lily giving sass to one of the CGA girls. That just happened recently. Her advice to classroom is, don't be afraid to fail. If you're afraid of failure, you don't deserve to be successful. Now the senior Haley Gravity. Now we have the libero number two, Madeline DeWolf, wearing the pink jersey tonight. Madeline is the daughter of Michael and Terry DeWolf. Her future plans are to go to college to become a neonatal nurse and eventually get married and have a family. Her most memorable moment is when Dreama thought she was calling the radio station and she was actually calling Jimmy Johns. <laughs> Her advice to underclassmen is it's only a problem if you make it a problem. She must want to get that song played uh, freaky fast. <laughs> <laughs> and that is senior Madeline DeWolf. And now we've got number six coming out. That is Kimball Ferguson. Kimball is the daughter of Todd and Melissa Ferguson. Her future plans are to become a millionaire. There's a good plan, right? Become a millionaire and travel the world. I like that future plan. Her most memorable moment is no matter the outcome, this game, right here, right now. Her advice to underclassmen is, your last couple years on this court will go by fast, so make them good ones. And that is senior Kendall Ferguson. And our fourth and final senior of the evening is Drina Richard. She is the daughter of Hugh and Vicki Richard. Her future plans are to attend Grace College and study sociology, get a bachelor's degree, and work with abused women and children. Her most memorable moment is whenever we play Culver Community and win because it's always a fun game. Also, our trips to the Dunes and Notre Dame volleyball games. Her advice to underclassmen is, put everything in perspective. You have to understand that it is only four years of life and a lot of things won't matter because the bigger future is yet to come. And that is Senior Dreamer Richard. It's a nice solid group athletically on the court, but also good character in this senior class. Uh, it would be one way to describe them. There's just good leadership, good character out of these girls. You can see the respect right now that the underclassmen have. Often accompanied by tears, as we're definitely seeing. Uh, but that's... Obviously a big reason for the nice turnout here in the gymnasium today uh, is in recognition of the class of 2020. We've got a lot of parents, grandparents, friends, extended family all here today to support these young ladies. Uh, really excited to see what they're able to do go off and sounds like they've all got good plans uh, ahead of them. Especially they, the millionaire one. The millionaire, there you go. I don't know how she's going to make her millions, but uh, she'll figure that out. She right? at least has a goal. <laughs> And we've got, uh, you know, I love the advice they shared. Uh, I'll just, I think sometimes you start to recognize that maybe come senior year as, as the clock starts to wind down a little bit on your, your season things, uh, the perspective starts to change a little bit. I know there's still times where I wish I could go back and play, and now it's been a dozen years since I've been out there, but you still just get that itch a little bit. And, oh, that's all right. In 13 well. years, you'll be able to get out there yourself. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that don't know it, um, his wife is the uh, volleyball coach, and she is pregnant. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a uh, uh, quick advertising break here, and then... Uh, We'll probably come back because I think we're going to have, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of them warming up. So you'll be able to watch the, uh, the girls warm up, but you won't hear any, any of the uh, uh, audio from, the, from it. So um, with that, we will be back here shortly. At Co-Alliance, we understand the importance of community. 
After all, we've been farmer owned since the 1920s. And now that we're a part of your community, we want to become your total agronomy solutions provider. CoAlliance offers the latest in ag technology for your operation. From field scouting and fertilizers to premium seed and precision agriculture, we can help take your operation to the next level. Put the resources of your local cooperative to work. Contact CoAlliance today. At Oliver Ford, we reach beyond your dealership expectation, help you in making fun decisions on your new vehicle, or let it try our professional touch by our service and parts department. We are the only Indiana new and used car dealership that has won the President Award 17 times. With over 100 years of sales experience, we're here to hold your hand from start to finish with no pressure or gimmicks. Contact us today. This is old you. And this is now you. Things change. Your insurance should too. Talk to an Indiana Farm Bureau insurance agent. And now you can stop knocking on wood. I don't think of this as a high school weight room. It's more like a high school classroom. I'm learning how to manage my time here. I'm learning that it's important to have goals and that it takes persistence and commitment to reach them. And I'm learning that the best way to lead is by example. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. <laughs> First Federal Savings Bank has provided mortgage loans for over 50 years. We're now offering commercial loans to support our local businesses. We offer business loans for real estate, equipment, lines of credit, and investments. We also offer simply free business checking for all your banking needs. Contact Lindy Breeden, our business lending expert, to take the worry out of your business banking. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. At Co-Alliance Propane, we treat our customers like neighbors because, well, that's what we are. When you trust Co-Alliance Propane as your seriously local propane provider, you're trusting a team of professionals who live, work, and watch the game from right across the county, not the country. A team that's close by and seriously dedicated to your safety and providing the best service possible. Find out more about Co-Alliance Propane's seriously local service and how you can get 50 gallons of propane free at CoAlliancePropane.com. This is old you. And this is now you. Things change. Your insurance should too. Talk to an Indiana Farm Bureau insurance agent and now you can stop knocking on wood. Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play.
All right, we're back. Uh, we have uh, 30 seconds left before the uh, start of the game, and I, I believe, uh, I think they got the audio fixed down there, so we'll probably have the national anthem. And then uh, get started into the, uh, um, into the game here at the uh, Argus TV on RTC TV 4. And I'm actually hoping that it's going to be just as good of a game as what it was for the, you know, when we watched the JV games. Um, do you have any stats there for us? I don't have anything real uh, important to bring in with uh, Washington. Doesn't have anything on Max Preps. Of course, that's where I kind of got to pull everything from. I'll kind of talk about ours perhaps throughout uh, throughout the game. I do have a little bit of information on the sectional and on the tournament in general, but we'll get to that after the starting lineup. So, well, speaking of sectionals, uh, we got a we got an update from the uh, the boys soccer sectional. Uh, right now, Argus is up 11-0. It was 10-0 at the half. I have no idea how much time is left. But I would definitely say that uh, they will probably be advancing to Wednesday night. I was going <laughs> to ask you, so that's on Wednesday night then? And Wednesday night. Do we know if that's the early or, or late game then? I think it's the late game. Um, I don't remember. They said it out there, but I don't remember who... who uh, who is uh, playing the first game. Yeah, we got the microphone going, so just going to have an introduction here, and then we will be on to the national anthem, followed by the starting lineups for each team. This evening, first for the visiting South Bend, Washington Panthers. They have number two, Diamond Coleman. Number two, Asia Phillips. Sorry, number four, Asia Phillips. Number five, Sierra Scott. Number seven, Michaela Adkins. Number 14, Orlando Cleveland. And number 15, Taylor Malone. seniors that'll be on the floor to start for the Lady Dragons tonight. We'll get our teams lined up and ready to go here with the first serve in just a minute or two. As the teams are getting settled, we did have the sectional pairing 
last night for the sectional tournament in volleyball. This year's state tournament will have 398 teams in the tournament. Of course, that's not just 1A, that is across the board, but almost 400 teams in the state uh, now at this at this time. And of course, we are in sectional 50 of the Class A sectional. I'm gonna see if I can't get a scroll down here. And we'll see we have, uh, this sectional will take place at West Central. And we'll have the Lady Dragons playing the host West Central in match number two, the first night of play, which I believe will be a Thursday night. If I'm not mistaken, that'll be October 17th. Again, I haven't gotten to see the actual breakdown of the game schedule, um, but I believe it'll be that Thursday. Some schools host a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday format. Some schools host a Thursday, Saturday. Right now on the RC website, we only have the matchups and not the game times and dates yet. So we're just play West Central, and the winner of that game will advance to play Triton, who received the bye. And on the other side, we have Lacrosse and OD with the winner advancing to play Culver Community in the 16 sectional 50 matchup down in West Central. And we're underway here at Argus. Dreamer Richard does a good job to keep that ball in play after a nice attack by Malone. Ferguson with the assist, and Nets will get the kill. A good start for Argus. A couple good defensive plays there on the back line by Dreamer Richard. That second dig was able to hit the right spot and allow Kendall Ferguson to set Schnitz up very nicely in the middle. Now Ferguson will pick up the base. When you're coming into this contest, this uh, like to say kind of based on the JV that certainly could be a close, close matchup and uh, a nice battle throughout. Argus takes the early three nothing lead. I'm going to apologize right now. We uh, uh, with us having two crews up here today, we're on borrowed equipment, and uh, they forgot to bring us a scoreboard camera. So I'm having to do it manually. And I know that there's a way I got to do it. So if you see numbers flying there in the, in the thing that's not correct, I'm working on getting it so I can uh, get it set up properly. I'll try to keep it up to date based on what I see on the actual board. I'll try to provide some updates until we can get this thing up and going. Right now we are in the lead four to nothing with Kendall back continuing to serve here. I think I got it figured out. All right. <laughs> so far you've only needed one side of it. We like that. Malone's attack blocked at the net by Schmitz, and she sends another attack back over. And a good opportunity outside to Kaylee Bradley. Her cross-court attack is wide, and Washington will get on the board. The winner of that sectional down at West Central will play in the regional at Culver Community. It will be a bit of a commute as everybody makes their way down to Francis will for that sectional. It'll be about an hour drive. A little bit of realignment this year with some teams shuffling around a little bit. It's going to be Jimenez for the Panthers back to serve. That pass is over the net, but able to Fall on the Washington side, point for the Lady Dragons. Will be Schmitz back to serve. It's a free ball played over by Southland Washington. A good opportunity here for Argus. Good pass. Dream it tight at the net. Able to keep it alive as well as the Wolf. But eventually we'll find the floor. Those are the opportunities we're looking to take advantage of. A free ball played over and had a decent attempt at it. But Washington comes away with the point. Kendall Ferguson will opt for the bump set. And Richard's attack hit the pole on its way over and that'll be out of bounds. Point to South Bend. Now 
that time Richards attack. Just inside the pile, hits off the net and finds the floor. And that'll be a kill for Dreamer Richard. We got you on a lot of work over there, don't we? Sliding the camera, hitting buttons with the scoreboard. And you can tell that, that we haven't broadcasted a volleyball game for a while because I, I forgot to slide the camera for the serves. <laughs> Setter here for Argus. Free ball to well done. That's, that's not as easy as it looks by Reed. Oh, no, that, that was a good. Uh, and Washington again scrambles. Good job a couple times as again sends a long one over. Yeah, that yeah, that was well done by Reed on that first free ball. I don't remember the exact measurements from the net to the back line, I guess, but probably a good 30, 40 feet she hit that ball without really much movement and still kind of working backwards across the court. So good job by her to keep the Panthers alive and they end up coming up with a point. Left-handed server was Brown. Ferguson will play the free ball. Brown able to get one hand on it, but too tight to the net. Unfortunately, we'll give the point to the Dragons, who now lead eight to six in the first set. I got to remember to hit the enter button in between people. That's what switches it between teams. <laughs> I, I heard them say that they, they were wanting to know if we would announce uh, uh, whatever they're having at the concession stand. Or I think they might have a time over on the concession stand because. It's getting already a little bit late here, and I think they're 8 o'clock or so, they're looking to close up. So something along that line. Well, if you do, if for the rest of this week, I'm just letting everybody know, if, if you do come out for any of the sectional games out at the soccer field, they do have specials at the concession stand. Uh, tonight was uh, uh, chicken and noodles. Yep. And I think Wednesday night, tomorrow night's chicken and noodles, and I think Wednesday night is uh, ham and beans, was it? Guess is as good as mine. It's my own parents are doing, I'm not even sure. <laughs> <laughs> it was either that or biscuits and gravy. Either, those, uh, those have been the two best of their meals. <laughs> <laughs> so you can come out, you can come out to the fields and uh, um, have dinner and some entertainment. You know, normally this time of year, you're, we're doing the soups and chilies out there, and they couldn't ask for a better week, it looks like, so far for the sectionals. Which we always talk about how nice and clear it is in the gymnasium. Oh, yeah, yeah, we but, never have any cloudy days in here. <laughs> but they're fortunate out there this week. But the way the weather's been, it's going to be a two touch on Washington on the set attempt and a point back over to Argus. Been pleased uh, so far to see, much like I saw against Elkhart Christian about 10 days ago, just seemed to be a lot more aggressive looking offensively to go win some points rather than playing free balls over. Uh, just seemed to be a little bit more aggressive, trying to go out there and get some kills, earn some points. See if we can continue to keep that pressure on as unforced service errors go back and forth there. And that'll bring us back up to the top of our rotation with number six, Kendall Ferguson. Nice line drive served by Kendall. LaBelle did a nice job. And well done by Brown to put that ball in play. Going to get Schmitz with the two touch on the attack. And Danny Reed will check in for the Panthers. As it's Jimenez back to serve and Richard with the pass to Bradley. 
The ball is going to be too tight for the Wolf to do anything with. We maintain the lead here throughout the first set, but Washington draws within one. Got to get our passes a little more towards the net, give our setters a chance. Giving Washington the chance to get on the attack. There's a better ball. It's going to be Ferguson to Schnitz. Good attack, just a little long on the backside. And that'll tie us up at 11 to 11. Got it there finally. <laughs> DeWolf to Ferguson, back to DeWolf. That attack hits on the outside of the hand and finds the net. We've had a few unforced errors here, allowing Washington to rally off about four or five in a row to get their first lead, I believe, in the set. Kendall opts for the two shoot over the net. I learned that watching college volleyball with my wife last week. I heard the broadcast, so I'm going to have to remember that one. That's two shoot? Two shoot. So when our setter chooses to go ahead and just shoot it over the net rather than set, that's on the second hit, so I suppose I call it a two shoot. And that's what we call just uh, two hands kind of shoving the ball across the net. At least that's what I'm going with. That's how, that's how it looked when she was broadcasting it, so I went with it. Uh, in that instance, Kendall felt she was too tight to the net to be able to pull that ball back for our team, so she chose just to play it across. That can serve is going to find a hole in the middle of the floor, and that'll be an ace for Michaela Adkins. Maddie DeWolf did her best to get down there and dig that thing up, but then able to keep it in play. And Adkins back at it again, same spot, this time Richard. From Ferguson, Richards cross court attack. We'll find the line. And the kill goes to Jimmy Richard. The assist to Ferguson. And Sam Rose will check in at the front row with Kaylee Brandy back to serve. Well, you hate points like that. Well, miscommunication on our side. As we're getting up now to the middle teams, those errors start to become a little bit more costly as we get down the stretch here. Washington returns one back to us. Down 14-15. Caitlin DeWolf the silver. Short serve. And Washington unable to get back and play. Don't know if she was going for the short serve. It sounded like a bit of a miss hit off the side of the hand, right? Yes, it did. Um, but so there's that one game, though, that those short serves paid off. I uh, guess that doesn't really matter. That one looked a little bit more directional. And only she will know, I suppose. Ferguson reaches back. He made that look a little easier than it probably was. I was a little nervous about her trying to attack that one instead of a free ball, but she's able to time it out and find a spot across the court and get the kill. Sometimes it's a challenge for us as hitters as the, uh, the pass does not make it up to the net for the setter. And generally, you want to try to back up to wherever that setter has to get to and be even further behind the setter. So uh, hitters generally have a spot they like to get to, but you got to adjust a little bit based on where that pass actually went to and maybe just a little more. That way we're always moving forward trying to make a play on the ball. Of course I say that and she got the kill, so yeah. it all matters, right? <laughs> There's a good ball and Kendall's in good position on that one. The cross court attack is kept alive by the libero. Good dig by Drew Maroof, or I'm sorry, Maddie Maroof, and Richard came in second. So like I heard uh, Maddie's elbows hit from up here. They wear those knee pads, but they generally don't have anything on the elbows, which sometimes surprises me because they come down just as hard on those. Well, you, know, you, you take a look at the knee pads from when we were in, at their age, and there's not much knee pad there. I remember the ones we used to have, they hit 
what, two inches thick <laughs> or more? <laughs> Looked like you were going out skateboarding or, or rollerblading. Washington's opened up a two-point lead and a tight first set. It was the Dragons leading pretty much until the 10th point, and now here in the teens, it has been Washington leading by a couple points throughout. The pass by Schnitz will find Dwarf, a good middle attack by Rose. About a foot too long on that back line. She hits it all the way out of the gym. Charles Brown is back serving, and we're gonna have a timeout taken by Argus here down 19 to 16. We're going to go ahead and do a commercial break here real quick, and we will be bit right back. Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? After all, we've been farmer owned since I like it the because it's a place where my friends get and to now see that we're a part of your community. We want I like to it because your total agronomy I'm playing for someone provider. besides Total Alliance myself. offers the latest I'm in for everybody in my school. Your operation. And every field scouting and fertilizers, Indiana premium High seed and precision sports. agriculture, we can help take your operation to the next level. Put the resources of your local cooperative to work. Contact Go Alliance They're today. more than just a game. Come and see me play. And we are back here at the uh, Phil Waybright Gymnasium where the Argus Lady Dragons are taking on the South Bend Washington Panthers and you are watching Argus TV on RTC TV 4. Um, if you are just joining us and you notice that the scoreboard looks a little different, that is because uh, we're manually operating the scoreboard tonight. Um, instead of having a camera on there, we've got two teams, or, uh, two RTC crews up tonight. Uh, uh, one covering senior night here at volleyball and one uh, out at the boys sectional game, uh, which the last I heard was 11 to 0. I don't know how much time they had left or anything, but uh, uh, that is going on. And so you may see a little delay in the scores or, or the wrong score going up. That's because we're having to manually do it on the computer. <laughs> out of the timeout. Argus scrambles defensively on the serve received, but the free ball by Rose will find the back row. And a much needed point there. We did not want that thing to open up to four points. Instead, we're back down to two. With Dina Richard back to serve. A promising server. A lot of top spin on her serve. She can rally off some aces. But finds the libero on the back row. Phillips. Good opportunity here for the Dragon Schnitz. To the wolf, the back set. Good idea, but referee says too much with the second hand. Good creativity, good opportunity there with Kendall Ferguson on the far side. Ferguson with the bump set, and Schnitz takes a little bit off of that one. Just about finds the court. And unfortunately, Washington's. I thought we were maybe going to get called for something in the net. I didn't see the two-touch there, but that is what was I, called. I said, I thought she swatted at it with one, but I was watching it on the monitor. It's not as big of a screen. I thought she swatted it with one hand. I think the coach right now is even kind of asking what what that one might have been. Regardless, I think it went out of bounds. Again, I was watching the play at the net when I heard the whistle and didn't track the ball. Yeah, so it did, it did go out of bounds. Okay, so regardless, and an ace for Mandy DeWolf. A much needed service ace there for the Lady Dragons. 20 to 19 in this tightly contested first set. I think we've been within two or three points pretty much the entire set both ways. Just kind of what we expected coming in. Good positioning by DeWolf able to get it up and Schnitz is going to have to track it over her head. And she finds a spot on the far side off the Washington defender, and it'll be a 20-20 score. In this race to 25. Really might need to try to keep our serves uh, away from Phyllis back there. She's been very calm and collected on her passes, hitting that spot right to the center. I'd like to see us try to mix it up and 
You can find her. She's wearing a bright pink shirt. <laughs> Might try to aim elsewhere. Make somebody else make a play. Yeah. That one sails on. We did get our first lead there for just a moment. I think that was our first lead probably since before 10 points. It seems like yes. they were up to 10 and they were up to 20. Hopefully we'll get it here back in the 20s again. And miscommunication there between the back row. Down four, here will give Washington the point and the lead by one. We're running out of room for those types of areas. We're going to have to tighten up here in the last few points. Ferguson has played in tight. And holy shit. We're going to find a hole in the floor, and she's going to get the kill. Good body control by Kendall Ferguson, and good awareness to find a hole in the middle of the floor. A big point there for Argus, and now she's back to serve. No touch, and that serve does stay along. She has that no spin floating type of serve, and that thing looked like it shouldn't have made it that far, and it just kind of kept going. And good job by Washington to read that ball and track it all the way out of bounds. And we are right back. This game, I was just saying, the last few points might be decided on who, who doesn't make the unforced stare, make the other team go out and win a point. Because what we need here is a ball in play, make Washington attack towards us, see if they can make a play. Schmitz's ball is going to find the middle of the floor. And Richard, right there to pound it back down on the tip. And it'll be set point for Argus 24 23. Schmitz back to serve. Looking for that short serve again in the same spot. Again, I like that. Keeping it away from the bear. Make somebody else make a play. A good attack by Reed. It was kept up by Schmitz. And then Ferguson and Bradley with the attack to the far side. It's going to be Malone. Bradley, nice shot with one hand. Keep it alive. And right back, good decision. The tip over the net. Dragons are scrambling a little bit defensively. It's going to be tight to the net. And unable to do anything with it after that. Right over there, usually when you're scrambling, you're trying to put that ball in the middle of the floor towards the front, just got a little too tight to the net. And now we have to win by two. We should win by two. We've seen other game earlier in the year where that did not happen, but we should win by two, 24-24. The Wolf's back row attack is brought back over, and it'll be Caitlin DeWolf to set to Dreamer Richard. And we're gonna have to see what the call is. It looks like we're going out of bounds. Point to South Bend, Washington. The referee is kind of looking at the line drugs. Line drugs looking at the ref. Those are really I, I think the line drugs was afraid to make the call. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's one where the referee might have the best chance being up on the ladder there. But now it's set point for Washington. No chance. But Richard with the attack to the corner. This one's tight to the net. It's going to be Bradley. Keep the ball alive. Malone. Puts a little top spin on it. That goes off the hands of the Wolf. And Washington will take the first set by the score of 26-24. A close first set all the way through. So unable to close it out there for Argus. Both teams had some unforced stairs down the stretch, but it was Washington able to put enough points together there to walk away with the 26-24 lead. But I think, again, like we said, it might be an indication of what's to come tonight. Close contested sets, the opportunity perhaps to go four or five sets tonight. We're challenging Phil on this scoreboard to see if he's got the sets up there. one nothing. scores back to 0-0. Zero, zero. Looks good to me. Yep, we've got her there. We've got a couple <laughs> of minutes here. I don't know if you want to lay out for just a, a minute. Take an advertising break here. You are watching Argus TV on RTC TV4. At Oliver Ford, we reach beyond your dealership expectation, help you in making fun decisions on your new vehicle, or let it try our professional touch by our service and parts department. 
We are the only Indiana new and used car dealership that has won the President Award 17 times. With over 100 years of sales experience, we're here to hold your hand from start to finish with no pressure or gimmicks. Contact us today. This is old you. And this is now you. Five wears his fire hat and coat in the room. Things change. Your insurance should too. Talk to an Indiana Farm Bureau insurance agent. And now you can stop knocking on wood. And we're back here at the Full Waybright Gymnasium where the South Bend Lady, or South Bend Washington Lady Panthers uh, just took the first set from the Argus Lady Dragons, uh, 26 to 24. And uh, uh, which we were kind of anticipating this to be a, a very good game tonight, a very close match. I'd, I'd rather watch games like this than, uh, um, than when they're blowout one way. You know, this here is exciting. I know the JV, the JV game when they were playing was going back and forth and close, close, close scoring. And, uh, um, I'm, and I'm going to assume that if the things go the same way, this gymnasium is going to get loud. It's absolutely good for you, especially with sectionals right around the corner. Playing those tight games, you're going to do a little bit of those jitters. You got a good crowd here tonight. It can be a little different mentally. Uh, so it's just good to, to be in those types of ball games. Unfortunately, in that first set, not to be on the other side of it. But we still got room. We still got time. It's a best of five here in the varsity contest. The sectional will bring teams that can be very balanced. Um, there's a number of teams over there in that West Central sectional that I would imagine will lead to some very competitive play, beginning with Argus and West Central in that first match. And there's that two-shoot by Ferguson. There's nothing else you can take with you tonight, Phil. That'll be a... Uh, and that was a bullet one, too. <laughs> that was. <laughs> you, know, that's, you know, that's good by Ferguson. That kind of shows me a couple things, that she's not stuck in just the routine of set, but she's being aware of what's around her, and you mix that up a little bit, you better believe that's going to make Washington think a little bit whenever that ball's coming down to, to Ferguson as to where to be. So it's good to see by her. That usually shows a little confidence by the setter. Good attack by... Washington, that's Reed defining the cross court hole, and that's that's tough to defend. That's good placement right on the line. As Cleveland is back to serve. We'll find Dreama Richard. Bumps up from Ferguson, takes Caitlin DeWolf off the net, but able to keep it in play. Malone with the attack, and now it'll be Bradley back the other way. Attacks by both teams, not a lot of pace yet on one. Ooh, Caitlin's tip attempt catches the tape and no home court roll on that one. That's a good look for six. Okay. <laughs> Come on, we, we probably are in agreement. We thought it was a little deep, but we'll get the benefit of the doubt on that one. So he was setting up to be a good attack. That's good placement on that set, right where Schmitz likes to pound that home. We talk about it every time. It's not an easy rule to jump out there and be a line judge. They don't get to go through professional practices. They don't have referee clinics. They are volleyball players. Yes. They go to volleyball practice, play volleyball games, and they get thrown on a line once in a while, and they do their best. And, and then they have to make calls against their own team. That's right. So it's a little <laughs> bit of a, a different situation that doesn't play out in most other sports. That'd be kind of like your eighth hitter going out and being the second base umpire all of a sudden. And having to call your own player out of second base. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a yeah. little bit different. Again, it's a good character thing probably out here uh, for these girls, even if they don't always love to do it. 
but I think it also maybe gives you a little perspective as a student athlete of what the referees are doing every single time they're officiating games. It can be a difficult, a difficult process. We should probably make a couple of parents do that. Yes, that may not be a bad idea. I've had my fair share of refereeing in different sports. It's, sometimes you do have a better view from the stands than you do the field. I'll tell you, especially basketball, it can get very crowded on the floor. It can get hard to see at times. And yeah, it's, it's not as easy as it looks. Could rally back and forth here, but that set is too tight for that. Four to four early on in set number two. And it's Malone back serving for the Panthers. Good pass by. Oh, that was a big swing and miss. <laughs> that blinked out there is Matty Dwarf on the pass and Ferguson set. Just mistimed on the far side, but that was a good looking pass and set combination. More of what we need to see. And see here for out of rotation or a foot foul. Stepped on a toe on the line. Foot foul? Yeah. Okay. I'm hoping we can't, or hoping we can get a uh, bit of a lead here. Maybe we got a good crowd, been a little quiet here right now. But of course, wake up as it gets down to the last few points of a set, or certainly if this thing goes to five. Sometimes with crowds, you kind of got to generate your own excitement on the court and get the crowd into it, kind of vice versa. Had some good opportunities, just haven't quite been able to execute on our attacks right now. But once we start to time these out, I think good things are going to happen. Charlie Brown. Looks like that. So maybe he's going to go out, but regardless, we are able to keep it alive with the free ball over. And it's going to be Jimenez. Her attack. Schnitz hustling to keep it alive. The Wolf tried to track it, but it would have been a hard play for sure. different serve approach. I think throws us off a little bit on the timing. Looks like she's about to hit and then kind of stalls out before the serve. And there's Dreamer with the kill. We've seen that hole a few times. I think if we just took a little bit off and try to hit that, as I call it, the donut, the donut hole circle defense there. I think right in the middle of the floor, there's a little bit of space for us to work in offensively. The attack is long by Washington, and we're tied back up. I believe that's the third tie of this set. It's been back and forth, much like the first one. And now I, do have a, I do have a final from out there at the soccer field. Uh, 11 to 1. 11 to 1. Our boys will advance to the Wednesday sectional semifinals. Is that what you told me then? And yes. So we must be back up to enough teams. I thought at one point soccer had gotten down to just almost two games or something. I've lost track now with all the class soccer they've divvied up. But I'll take it if we win Wednesday, we will then play on a Saturday. We'll be we playing Saturday at 4 o'clock, I believe. Okay, and the girls will be after that. 7 o'clock. All right. as long by Ferguson and points to Washington. And so our Eugene Snyder Field out there is hosting both the boys and girls section, all right? So yes. Yes. tomorrow, our uh, girls in action tomorrow. The girls are tomorrow. Okay. Um, now the Argus girls won't play until Thursday. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll get the girls in the middle of the court again. It's been there. But our, our girls got a bye win. Yeah, our girls got the bye. Um, their, their first game will be Thursday, and if they win, then they go right into Saturday. And then uh, Argus is also hosting the boys' regionals. So it's going to be a couple busy weeks out there then. Yes. Sam Rose with another attack. 
Good to see her get involved offensively here at the outside hitting position. She might get one more. Instead, it's going to be Schnitz. Reach up and finds a hole on the near side. We goes Ferguson on the assist, and Schnitz with the kill. Good serve by Richard there. Nice pass by Coleman. That ball is going to fall out of bounds. I was just about to say again, we've had some good serves, but they've all been right to fill up for Roberto there in the back row until I last one to Coleman, but she did a nice job with it. That's going to go right back to Coleman. You can see she's kind of just carried a little too far, but you can see with the pace of Gina Richard's serve, she's having to do her best just to get in position. Doesn't even have to swing the arms at all, just kind of get them out there. And let the velocity of the ball do most of the work. And we're going to have a timeout by Washington as we've gone up 12 to 9 in set number two. I think this is the biggest, the biggest lead we've had. I think three games, is yeah. about where we've been. I'm not sure we've had a four point yet. So we'll see if we can get there coming out of the timeout. I mean, Washington just trying to break up the rhythm of Richard back there serving. Just doing a nice job putting some pace on the serve, keeping the ball in play. Washington, I just kind of noticed, sporting the pink socks this evening. Pink socks, and I think they had the, uh, the pink pink warm-up shirts. Okay. Um, Lola Barra obviously wearing the pink jersey, much like ours. The girls just had their, the Argus girls just had their pink game on last Thursday against CGA as part of the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. They do a little fundraiser each year, wear pink jerseys out to the game, decorate the gym with a lot of pink, have a bake sale, all types of things, with all the proceeds going to breast cancer uh, research, and I believe it all stays locally. I didn't get an exact number on what was raised this year. I know in years past they raised hundreds of dollars that they donate, so a nice effort and kind of a player-driven fundraiser that they do, so good for them. See, and I, I look down there, and I want a pair of the shoelaces and a pair of the socks. <laughs> I was just thinking the Wolf probably didn't get to wear that on Thursday because she's a little boy. So I guess she wore a blue jersey and probably thought, I think I get to wear my pink jersey tonight. <laughs> so she can make sure she gets a fair shot at it. And now we've opened up that four-point lead and Maddie DeWolf with a nice floating serve over. Attacked by Cleveland, doesn't have a lot of pace, but in a dangerous spot. And Argus unable to put the ball back in play. And we are back to three. Washington's working out their substitution pattern. Looks like we're going to have number six, Trinity McWilliams, on to serve. First time we said her name this evening. The sophomore defensive specialist, player that you'll see in the back row for the Panthers. So she's able to pound it home. Time just to regroup a little bit. Get ourselves a good attack. It's an opportunity here. The Wolf to the Wolf and Schnitz. She likes it right there with that attack. Just a little bit long towards the corner. Might have been a bit tight for her to work with. if we're able to pick out some of those holes offensively. It's going to be Richard, and that ball comes off a little from here. Washington has rallied off four in a row to tie this thing right back up. So as soon as we get to, I think, our largest lead of the game of four points, Washington brings it right back, which is what this fight's been all about. Back and forth. Several ties. And that's going to be a two cut on the set. Ferguson with the free ball. Washington with the 
opportunity here. It's going to be Malone. And her attack is wide, just barely wide. But we'll take it. It wasn't by much. No. <laughs> it's a game of inches sometimes as you get around that gray line. Washington making a couple subs again. As Reed makes her way back in the front row. Ferguson back to serve for the Dragons at the top of the rotation. And that'll be an ace for Kendall Ferguson. Kendall has 27 aces on the season coming in to this contest. Malone with the attack. Good dig by Ferguson. One hand. Humbaugh's going to go long and it falls. Good job by Kendall to get a, just get a fist out there. Humbaugh's back over the net. She's back to serve again. Now up two. Low serve and it goes. Catch the tape and come back. Imagine it would be much like the first set as we get towards that 25 point mark. Which team can play sharper? Which team can limit their errors? There's an Air Force South Bend, Washington. And we're going to have Sierra Snitz back to serve. Puts it up in play. And it's going to be Coleman. And attack finds the net. And the lead is back up to three. 19-16, set number two. Again, Washington took the first set, 26-24. In a tight back and forth contest. It's been much of the same here, but the Dragons have kind of maintained that two or three point lead. And Smith is finding a soft serve right in the three spot of that defense. And she picks up another race. Washington trying to sort out who's going to take the serve. We'll see if Schnitz comes right back to it again. She's looking for that early this time. It's the libero Phillips. And it's going to be Reed on the attack. The bump set. Richard puts the ball in play. Washington scrambling. They're going to have to play a free ball. Again, a well done job by Washington. That's a minute has put the free ball back over. Working against your body there, able to keep it alive. Richard just barely, he had to have gotten a fingertip on it. I thought she was going to have a little bit of a mistiming there, but it worked out. There's been, there's been several plays where Washington has taken from the back line and just kind of, I call it, bumped it over back yep. all the way over, and not just over, just over the net. I mean, they've gone they've through distance. It. Yeah, that takes a little bit of strength, especially that last one. She's still running towards our stage over there. Right there. But now, did a nice job as Washington comes back and gets a kill of their own. Still a four point lead here. We've got Malone in the back row, which might help us out a little bit. Um, as far as Washington's attack, she's been one of their main hitters up front. It's a good opportunity here in the rotation for us to maybe take advantage. The ball has to cover a lot of ground to try to get to that hit. Unfortunately, all that momentum took it long. And Ferguson, they're going to call that, I believe, an attack here because of the plane of the net, perhaps, on the setter in the front row. She was doing all she could, I think, to just get that ball over and Probably left the ground in the process and broke the point of the net. Richard tried to put a little roll on that ball. And it's going to be a free ball opportunity here. Pass from Schnitz. It's going to be tight at the net. Richard with the attempt. But it is Washington's number five, Sierra Scott. Able to get last touch and back over. And we're going to have a timeout taken by Argus as they lead 21 to 20 in the second set. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. 
don't think of this as a high school weight room. It's more like a high school classroom. I'm learning how to manage my time here. I'm learning that it's important to have goals and that it takes persistence and commitment to reach them. And I'm learning that the best way to lead is by example. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. <laughs> and we're back out of the timeout with Argus leading 21 to 20. Washington's rallied off three points in a row to tighten this second set back up. Hopefully that timeout's just an opportunity to gather our composure. Come out and make a play here. Richard is to Ferguson, that bump set. Richard chooses just to play the free ball. Now Washington's going to have the attempt, and it's Coleman that's calling for it. But she's able to find the hole in the Argus defense, kind of the same area we've been working on. And now we are tied up again. I believe we're in a very similar situation in that first set. I was hoping Coleman in the back row, or Malone in the back row might help us out, but instead of serving us, put us on our heels a little bit. We've just been unable to execute offensively. And Washington takes their first lead in quite some time. 22 to 21, three points away from the set. There's still time. And we needed that. We're, we're struggling a little bit to make the play happen on our, our side. Credit to Malone, she was able to rally off about five serves in a row before that service there. Now it'll be Bradley back for Argus. And that toss looked like it got away from her, but able to keep it in play. But Argus unable to do anything. Kind of caught us off guard as Washington's pass came right back over the net. We weren't quite ready for it and unable to take advantage. And now to be Deshara Brown, the junior, back to serve. Washington needing two points. There's another serve into the net. And we've got the opportunity here. We need two in a row to take the set. Begins with the serve. It'll be coming off the hands of Caitlin DeWolf. And that serve also is going to be short. So several service errors in a row so far. Back and forth for both teams. Again, we talked about just the unforced errors down the stretch might be uh, the winning team. Whoever's able to put the ball in play and make plays. Washington sitting on set point. Dragons just looking to stay alive here. It's going to be Ferguson. Good attack. The tip by Washington kept alive. And now we're scrambling. Schmitz shoots it from the back row. It's going to be... Washington's number five, Sierra Scott, and she gets a kill in the middle of the floor, and Washington takes another two-point set win, 25 to 23. As the teams will switch sides and get ready for the third set. So much like we anticipated, close sets here early going. 26-24 and 25-23. Washington now leads two to nothing. First Federal Savings Bank has provided mortgage loans for over 50 years. We're now offering commercial loans to support our local businesses. We offer business loans for real estate, equipment, lines of credit, and investments. We also offer simply free business checking for all your banking needs. Contact Lindy Breeden, our business lending expert, to take the worry out of your business banking. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. At Co-Alliance Propane, we treat our customers like neighbors because, well, that's what we are. When you trust Co-Alliance Propane as your seriously local propane provider, you're trusting a team of professionals who live, work, and watch the game from right across the county, not the country. A team that's close by and seriously dedicated to your safety and providing the best service possible. Find out more about Co-Alliance Propane's seriously local service and how you can get 50 gallons of propane free at CoAlliancePropane.com.
This is old you. And this is now you. Things change. Your insurance should too. Talk to an Indiana Farm Bureau insurance agent and now you can stop knocking on wood. Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. And we're back here with the third set about to be underway. Again, Washington leads two sets to zero. A total of four points separating those first two wins for Washington. As I saw Coach Amanda DeVries over there, the assistant coach at the end of that team huddle, trying to get the Lady Dragons fired up. Good Miss Pyre to come out here. She brings energy over. I know she'll never want to bring that energy on the microphone and talk, but she does a great job of bringing energy to the team and kind of pumping them up over there. Well, the Dragons just got to find that one thing that they can pull out to get them over the top. They're getting to the top, they just got to get over it. And right there late, and South Bend, Washington, making some noise of their own over on the team bench. And we're underway. The third set, Kendall Ferguson. Seems like early on we've had leads and most of these sets by a couple points. See if we're able to do the same here. That's going to take Bradley out of play and unable to do anything with it. We were talking during the break. We'd like to stretch this thing to four or five sets, but it starts here with set number three. They're down 2 0, but they've been close. We've certainly got room. Ferguson looks for that two shoot on that one. Two hits, I did. I did see the spin on that one. So there is time still in this evening, but we obviously can't drop any sets at this point. Uh, backs to the wall a little bit. And a good set by Ferguson there. Kalen Dwarf's attack will be kept alive by Reed. Cleveland back over to the Lady Dragons. Get a rally going here. A touch at the net by Schnitz is kept alive, and now it's going to be Schnitz on the attack. Looking for a hold there, but well read by Jimenez. It'll be a free ball. Opportunity here for Washington. That looks like it's there, and it is by Reed. One of the longer rallies of the evening, back and forth. Now, if you are noticing that the uh, the camera work is uh, getting a little better and doing a couple other things, we've actually been joined by uh, Steve Stricker, the sports director for RTC. Uh, he uh, just came in from, he was running our crew out at the soccer field, so he's just come in to, uh, well, one, we have all of his equipment, so <laughs> he came in to see what's going on, and and uh, put them to work while we're at it. And put them to work while we're at it. Actually, <laughs> be four hits as we got crossed up. Well, I'd asked for the early lead, but instead it's Washington that's going to give it in this set. The Michaela Adkins, the junior setter for the Panthers, back to serve. Ferguson, good set. Richard on the attack. The bear on the right spot. Makes easy work of that. Washington sends the free ball over. 
Schnitz from the back row. That's a hole. She's going to get the pull. The assist from Ferguson. I think the holes have been there tonight. It's just a matter of can we get our heads up and find where they're at on the floor. We've talked to several games in the past. It doesn't always have to be a 50 mile an hour kill into the floor. Just a ball into the floor will get you the point. No, but with me just getting into this, those 50 mile an hour kills are they're <laughs> awesome, aren't they? They are awesome. It's kind of like we joke in basketball. Dunk is awesome. It's still worth two points like a layup, but it is awesome. <laughs> Richard with the block if you admit the, if the uh, assist will go to the wolf there as well. Richard times her jump very well. Fingertips over the net and right back down to the floor. I had to double check and make sure that they gave it to him because uh, the official on the other side pointed towards uh, South Bend, Washington. So Smith's just going to put it close to play. Wheelhouse is in for the Lady Dragon. She snuck in on me. First time we've seen her tonight. Refreshment number 11 here on the near side. And it is Ferguson that time with the T-shoe. A little help from the net. As it comes down to a dead spot on the floor on the near side. Again, good awareness by Ferguson. We're going to need plays like that come sectional time. It's kind of a new component from what I've seen. I haven't seen that part of our game too much. And as teams are going to watch some game film going into sectional, hopefully they won't catch this one. And that'll be a little bit of a surprise for them. That's the only time I root for not to watch RTC through <laughs> <laughs> the opponent. <laughs> yeah, I just love that we have the ability to do this. We finally got one of our own from the uh, back row all the way across to the three ball. Here we got a point out of it. I love the ability to be able to broadcast, broadcast these games. We talked about that before, especially being senior night. I don't think we necessarily have a way of knowing who's watching when, but. Well, we never know if we've got someone's grandma or the senior that's here that can't make it, but is able to watch us live. And we love that. No, I, I do get a report when we're done streaming, uh, f and it, it, it kind of gives me an idea, but I'm not 100% how to read it. <laughs> well, we've taken a two-point lead here. See if we can keep that going. Be nice to see one stretched out of seven or eight, wouldn't it? I mean, we haven't quite gotten there. Oh, I jinxed it. It's <laughs> a commentator's jinx right there. And, and unforced errors, unfortunately, have kind of been, for both teams, what has kept this game kind of tight. Seems like when uh, one team gets about three, four, five points, it tends to be a service error or something else that kind of kills the rally. Again, if you are, I guess I'd like to see us get aggressive. We've got offensively opportunity here. You know, make, make Washington make defensive plays, things like that. Where we, that's essentially a free ball and an opportunity for the Dragons. Just not quite far enough back on the attack, and we're having to reach above our head a little, I think, from that one. See the attack sails on. Another close contest. Another close set early on. Your sister Caitlin. Washington unable to put it back in play would be a point for the Lady Dragons. I'd love to just find that opportunity where we might rally off a handful in a row. I always think when I get see Richard back there to serve, she's the type of person that can do that. But I will say Washington has done a nice job on their serve receive tonight. That's going to be a left, I would imagine, there. Underneath the net by Brown. Do the best to get it up. But where we might see Dream of Serves be a little bit more effective, uh, give credit to Washington. They do a nice job just getting a good platform, making a nice pass. You'll usually see their bodies nice and still. Got to absorb the pace of Richard's serve. There's a little bit of there, but twice in a row, twice in a row there. The pass, so I'll give credit. Maybe it's just going a bit too far for Brown to be able to do anything else with other than try to tip it over the net, and it's Schmitz just sitting there waiting for it. So that credit does go to Richard, though, making things difficult. And there's an ace for Jimmy Richard. He's got a good smile on her face right now. 
He's enjoying it as we've opened it up to a four-point lead. I'm not saying a word about our point lead because that was what jinxed us the last time. Then just make Washington come out and make a play. If they're going to get a kill there, make a murder. But now it's going to be our chance. House of Wheelhouse, and there's that off speed hit, off the fingertips. And it finds a hole. That hole has been there a lot this evening. That's one of those swinging attacks. I'm not sure it's quite an intentional placement, but it works and it still counts. Another race by Jim Richard. Well, I asked for a rally when she got back there, and this time we got it. We both put it up to a six point lead, and South Bend Washington will take the timeout with Argus up. 13 to 7 in the third set. You are watching Argus TV on RTC TV 4, and we will be right back. At Oliver Ford, we reach beyond your dealership expectation help you in making fun decisions on your new vehicle, or let it try our professional touch by our service and parts department. We are the only Indiana new and used car dealership that has won the President Award 17 times. With over 100 years of sales experience, we're here to hold your hand from start to finish with no pressure or gimmicks. Contact us today. Ready to serve. Dream is going for her, what, seventh in a row? Seventh, seventh in a row, I'd say, yeah. Might have been 7-7 seven, seven when she started, so yeah. Oh, cross-court attack is out of bounds. But that is an aggressive air. You know, we're looking for the attack. Just sailed wide on us. But that does break up the rotation. And it'll be Coleman back to serve for Washington. That was an awkward server, an awkward reaction by us defensively. Is I think we just miscommunicated who was going to get to that ball. And it was too little, too late. So after great rally like that, though, we got to make sure we limit the damage, make sure we trade off here fairly quickly, get this side out. It's going to be Schnitz, and there's that hole. Been there all night. <laughs> I don't know again if we find a little, if it's a little bit of a miss hit. That set took us away from the court a little bit, and Schnitz might have been all she could put it in play, but well done, good body control, able to put that ball right in the middle of the court, and she gets the kill. That's gonna come over, and Schnitz just rolls it on over the net. Washington comes over on their second hit and finds, seems like that middle of the floor has been really popular tonight on both sides. A lot of balls hit the floor. Throw up serving. Argus is just going to have to play more or less a free ball across. A little miscommunication by Washington. And the attack is into the net. Well, we've had the lead several times that we've sat around the 15 point mark. This time a little bit larger margin than we've had in other sets. But again, you'd kind of think, you know, can you get a little 2 3 0 rallies? There's one right there. There's one right there. I think she was trying to second guess on whether it was going to go too long or not. Kendall's kind of got that floating serve, not a lot of rotation on that ball, so it tends to just go a little further than it looks, although I do think uh, Phillips was correct in trying to make a play on that. I think it was going to be inbounds. And a couple races in a row. Now taking hit on that one, possibly just a service there, to receive around Washington, but regardless, Ferguson gets the point for the Lady Dragons. And we've opened up the seven-point lead. Good attack by Jimenez. Opportunity here. Schnitz is under. Tries to find that hole. Better coverage that time by Jimenez. And the attack into the net by Washington. So it looks like Washington made a little adjustment there on that attack. Able to read the ball off of Schnitz's hand. And almost, looks like, uh, almost looks like that, that uh, girl from Washington. She was kind of trying for the slam dunk. And looks like she was kind of grabbing it and then throwing it right straight into the net. Schnitz is going to take the set. And it'll be the Wolf. Washington scrambling to keep it alive, but unable to do so. 
So a little different sequence there as we have Schnitz to Caitlin DeWolf. Largest has opened up by far their largest margin of the night, 19 to 10. Samia Foster, the freshman for Washington, makes her first appearance this evening in the front row. Ferguson still back serving. Yeah. And another point to the Dragons. Well, this 20 number has hurt us a lot tonight, but I, I think we've yeah. got to be feeling a little more comfortable in this set. Just keep doing what we're doing. Make Washington make a play. Another good serve. We're keeping the ball and play on our serves much better in this set. Ferguson does a nice job getting under it. Schnitz sees the hole. Good job by Jimenez to keep that ball alive. That was good awareness by Schnitz. Good opportunity. She's going to come back out with Bradley. Definitely got the pressure on offensively. Good attack by Malone. That's kind of an awkward ball over her right shoulder. But she's able to find a spot on the near side. I miscounted earlier in that, in that rally. I thought, I thought Washington had four hits over there. <laughs> like to try to get a couple more points here early on before Malone gets in that back row to serve. She was the one that kind of rallied off several there in that second set. Nice back set by Ferguson Schmitz trying to tip along that new line on her side just wide. She wanted it. Good idea. Twenty-one eleven. Sorry, 21-12. Caitlin DeWolf. Washington is starting to do a better job of covering that middle tipping zone that we have been hitting here in this third set. We're going to have to try to find another spot. I've seen in the back left corner towards the service one area. There's an opening. We'll see if we can find it as the Libero Phillips is all over that one. You know, you start 15 to cheat in like that, and you back to the corner. It looked like she was lining up to, to hit it hard and puts it right into the net. She has that big roundhouse swing. Yeah, she's got a full swing, doesn't she? Schnitz and serve will find Phillips. And the lower match attack is wide. Solid group here in the third set. Washington up two sets to zero. Looking to extend this match here, 22 to 12. It's going to be Reed. Ball's going to find the back corner. The Wolf makes an effort to it, but unable to keep it in play. Kayla Adkins, the setter for Washington, will check in and will be back to serve. Service here. We'll give the ball back over to Argus. Now two points away from taking this third set. It'll be the senior Kaylee Bradley back to serve. Free ball over to Argus. Opportunity here for the Dragons. Dreamer looking for that hole in the floor. Good job by Phillips to get down to it. But after that, back down. We'll have to see if Washington makes an adjustment here during the ascent. I don't want to get overconfident here, but should we go four? I think they're going to have to make an adjustment or Argus. We'll just keep pounding that spot right in the middle of the floor, pounding it even with tips. Opportunity here to end the set. It's going to be Girl House. Her tip will find Phillips. And the set here will give the 25th point to the Lady Dragons, and they take a commanding win in that set. 25-13, nearly doubling up. The Panthers, and we will be going to set number four right after this. Right after this. First Federal Savings Bank has provided mortgage loans for over 50 years. 
We're now offering commercial loans to support our local businesses. We offer business loans for real estate, equipment, lines of credit, and investments. We also offer simply free business checking for all your banking needs. Contact Lindy Breeden, our business lending expert, to take the worry out of your business banking. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. At Co-Alliance Propane, we treat our customers like neighbors because, well, that's what we are. When you trust Co-Alliance Propane as your seriously local propane provider, you're trusting a team of professionals who live, work, and watch the game from right across the county, not the country. A team that's close by and seriously dedicated to your safety and providing the best service possible. Find out more about Co-Alliance Propane's seriously local service and how you can get 50 gallons of propane free at CoAlliancePropane.com. This is old you. And this is now you. At Co-Alliance, we understand the importance of community. After all, we've been farmer-owned since the 1920s. And now that we're a part of your community, we want to become your total agronomy solutions provider. Co-Alliance offers the latest in ag technology for your operation. From field scouting and fertilizers to premium seed and precision agriculture, we can help take your operation to the next level. Put the resources of your local cooperative to work. Contact Co-Alliance today. And we are back here at the Phil Waybright Gymnasium where the temperature is always the same. A nice, comfortable 72 degrees and dry. Um, I'm assuming that since the sun's gone down, it's probably a little chilly outside. Um, about 56 out there now. 56, oh boy. Uh, the uh, Argus Lady Dragons took that last set uh, with a commanding lead. What was it, 25 to 13, something yeah. like that? Uh, the big question is, is are they going to have enough steam to get through Seven, one, three, at, least, yeah. at least one more set, if not two? We've definitely got the momentum right now, so we'll see if we're able to carry that out. Uh, a lot of times, early on in the set is that opportunity to kind of keep the pressure on and keep that momentum. Uh, wow, well done by us to keep that ball alive. And able to get the point. Now Washington comes in as a team that hasn't won a lot of games themselves. Um, so sometimes it can obviously work against you if you have an early 2-0 lead. And Argus, if we're able to put the pressure on here in this fourth set, uh, might be able to keep that momentum going through. Looks at the back row attack and gets the kill. So I just think this fourth set early on is going to be very important. To see if we can take Washington out of the game a little bit. We've had a lot of points routed off by Ferguson and Richard in that last game when they were back serving. That's Ferguson back there right now. So her set's a little tight, too tight for Bradley to do anything with. And we'll send the serve back over to Washington. So we're here on senior night at Argus High School. We've got a, a good crowd on hand, I think. Some of the kids may have filtered out a little bit. It is getting to be 8.50 at night here with possibly more gameplay to go. I know it'll be a late night for us. We're hoping to be able to have the seniors on the broadcast after the match. We'll see if we're able to make that happen. I depend if Steve wants to keep doing the camera or not. <laughs> Nitz will be back to serve the junior. Phillips, man, well done again. Washington just covers ground. That's Atkins able to chase that one down. And 
a couple times tonight. Not only do they get the free ball, but they end up scoring off of it. Unforced by the Dragons, of course, but Washington very quick. They, they just cover the court very well. It looked like they were going to have a play on it, but able to keep it alive. And that's a little bit of a momentum swing for them as they're able to make a play like that. See if we can get it right back here with Richard on the outside attack. Cross court and a kill. The assist from Caitlin DeWolf. And the kill will go to Drina Richard. With 69 kills. And she's added a handful to that staff this evening. Nitz comes out of the back row to set for Caitlin DeWolf. That attack finds the net. She was trying to go for that far corner that was open. Just didn't get it up quite high enough and rolled right down through the net. It's a trickier attack when that set is kind of coming from your back left. Ideally, you want that ball closer to the net, so it's more of a sideways set. Always makes it harder when that kind of in the same opportunity there, but the house just chooses to play the free ball. A lot harder when that ball's coming over your shoulder trying to track it and time it out. That's where you'd like them to be. The girl house the tip there, and that'll be a kill. Here we talk about that passing part of the game. It's very important to give those setters an opportunity to put the ball where the attackers want it. Caitlin Wolf with a top spin serve, not a lot of pace on it, but finds a hole right in the two spot. And she gets the ace. Caitlin DeWolf has 12 aces. Oh, 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 oh. Another kill for Richard. You like that one? I like that one. <laughs> that one there she even brought from way back. <laughs> That was behind her head and she brought it. I was kind of checking that stat about uh, the wolf was that I believe it was an overpass by Washington on the serve was that their pass that came over the net. Yes. And I'll tell you, attackers love that because as we just talked about, the ball coming from the side is one thing, the ball coming from in front of you, nothing better than that. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty easy to time out that ball. So you love it when you see that thing coming across the net. Opportunity to wind up and pound it in the ground. Already started to rally off a few. Richard with the net. Good job. She does get two touches there. One's a block, one's an attack. Dwarf, and now it'll be Drill House. Maddie does a nice job coming in to cover the attack. Free ball, opportunity here, and you can take advantage. Caitlin B. Dreamer. Looks like it's wide. Oh, they called it in. Referee on the far side is overruled. Out of bounds. Washington point. I say from up here, it looked like it was out. It did. And I know the Washington coach uh, called it out as well. Of course, she wanted to be out, but I will say she was right there in position. And I think the referees got that one right. But it will all bounce back out. Server. Washington has hurt themselves a little bit here in the last couple sets with more service errors than we saw in the first couple. Dreamer Richard back to serve. She had the rally in the last set for the Lady Dragons. She's got that top spin serve. Looking for the back corner. And gets right the ace. Back corner. Well placed serve. I've been saying throughout the night that we've had some pace on our serves, but many times uh, it's been right to the libero Phillips, and that's why she's out there. She's well, well skilled in that defensive uh, skill set to be able to handle some of those serves, but now it looks like Richard is trying to find some of the sideline and unable to do so on that one. Nine to seven in the four, fourth set. Make sure I get that right. Schnitz is gonna have to play a free ball. 
Washington sends a free ball back. Not able to get that pass quite high enough for Caitlin. She tried to play the routine set, and I know coaches over there are saying go with the bump set. It's one of those quick decisions you got to make. If that ball's not above your head, you probably got to switch it up. There's that middle of the floor again. Just like that, a little bit of a miscommunication, and next thing you know, we're back up here to tied score. Schnitz, that's a good position and a kill. You can just tell sometimes when that I ball's like that coming. I like that one too. <laughs> <laughs> you can just tell sometimes when that ball's coming into the right spot. We're still amateurs. We forget about that replay button, don't we? We'll call that a replay. Not quite the same. But there's Snitz. And we're going to try to get one we're in We're going to try to do a replay here. We're going to see the overpass by Washington and Schnitz right at the net. And now we're back live here as DeWolf serve. And I think Washington, yes, on a violation under the net. Schnitz kind of came down on Brown. And that'll be a violation on the Panthers. Point to the Lady Dragons. I keep forgetting about that replay, but like we were talking before, we actually have the camera tonight up on the platform where before it's, it was down on the concrete and it always seemed like that official was always in the way. <laughs> well, we got it right at the end of the year, right? Last <laughs> yes, game. yes, last we'll game. Be, we'll be ready for next season. Snitz with another kill, the assist from Ferguson. This is right where we were in the last set when we started to open up that lead. Doing much of the same here, as long as I haven't jinxed this, right? But so far, again, doing a nice job putting the serves in play and good things are happening. Phillips unable to handle that one and Washington is gonna take a timeout. But I tell you, the, the Washington libero, she has been all over the place tonight. I mean, it just seems like she's in every single play. It seems like when we're going to serve, if you really look at their positioning, they leave her a lot of floor, and I think they just say, you get 10 feet in all directions. Yes, <laughs> it's yes. It's just the cover. Like I, said, I mean, you're seeing her dive. You know, me at this age, if I dive, it's taking me 10 <laughs> minutes to get back up. <laughs> you're done for the day. <laughs> I'm <huh>? done. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's part of her role back there. That's why she wears that pink jersey. And that's why I was saying earlier, I'd like to see us try to get our serves away from her a little, but a little bit of that is, she goes to every serve at the same time. So yes. I think that's why you saw Richard trying to go sideline to sideline a little bit, mix her serves up. At least make it harder for Phillips to make a good pass. We lead here by five. Washington takes that timeout, trying to ice the server as we got Maddie DeWolf, the libero, back again for the Lady Dragons. It's going to be Samuel Foster, the freshman, checking in for Cleveland. <laughs> Referees whistle and Maddie serve. And that's exactly what oh, a, I think we jinxed it. It's what a timeout is looking for right there. <laughs> a coach's timeout just looking to break up the rhythm of that server, much like a free throw shooter on the basketball, a free throw line. And this is about um, where we were at last set. Just see if we're able to not let Washington get a rally of their own. Try to limit to a couple points and get that side out, get possession back. Washington helps us out with the service error of their own. Back to the top of the rotation, number six, the senior, Kendall Ferguson. Gets that ball right where she likes to be, good serve. Right to Phillips in the middle of the floor. The attack finds the net. You know, there again, she's got that big roundhouse <laughs> swing and it just, Sometimes it's just over the net, and, but most of the time we've seen tonight, it goes right in the middle. Because I've seen the middle of the net. The uh, Kendall gets some help from the net. 
It's that rule that I hate, except for when it's our serve, then I love it. <laughs> it's just so hard to handle as a defensive player. You just don't know how much that ball's gonna get caught up in the net. And she gets the ace there. You know, part of the reason Phillips has been in play so much is at that libero position, she's just playing in the middle of the court. Um, we're doing a good job of serving in play, but we're not always probably the most confident of being aggressive to the corners with our serves. So our ball will find uh, have a tendency to go right down the middle of the court. <clears throat> but right now, we talked about it earlier, just limit those unforced errors, keep that ball in play, make Washington earn some points, and they are scrambling more defensively in these last two sets. Again, we've taken another commanding lead where uh, we're up there now where Washington needs to start start figuring out what to do. This is where even more so if we can just keep the ball in play, make Washington have to make plays. They have to start getting a little bit more aggressive as this game gets closer to 25. You have to put your foot on the gas pedal a little bit. They've got time still. The Dragons looking to get a quick side out and take back control. Short serve. B. Ferguson, nice back set. Schnitz with the kill. And a ball into the bleachers, Phil, for the first time tonight. We like to keep track of bleacher count when we're here. I think that might be one of the few ones we've had. I keep waiting for them to come out with the rule just like you do in major leagues. If it's in the bleachers, <laughs> it's yours to keep. <laughs> get it and run. And now Schnitz is back to serve 20 to 12. And this is where I just, again, I feel like Washington's confidence maybe is down a little bit. They just don't look as sharp on the other side of the net as they did early on. No, and they're starting to lack that communication that they were doing earlier. Again, you got a, a team who has struggled throughout the season and says, where if you're Argus, got to just keep that momentum going, finish off this set and get into the fifth. Schnitz looks for the short serve. Phillips comes up and plays it. Uh, Bradley with the free ball. Looks like it's going to be Malone. Nope, we're going to have Reed come in. She's just going to play the tip attack, the shoot, and Schnitz will shoot it back over. Reed again, not a lot of pace on that ball. Bradley, it looks like we're in the net. Uh, Washington is in the net. Okay. I thought our girl was the one that ran I, into I said it. it wrong, yeah. Uh, Washington's Reed was in the net on the block attempt. And we've opened up a 10-point lead and <laughs> looking like we might get to that fifth set that we so wanted here. And it's been a long night. Steve's looking here. at me funny. <laughs> and that we're, is be we're talking out at the... the soccer field uh, about broadcasting of you know doing it and Amy Stone she goes oh she goes I'd be terrible at broadcasting I said have you watched one of our broadcasts I said <laughs> I'm right. on there <laughs> Sheer Snitz served it to the middle of the floor Coleman plays the free ball Ferguson good set uh, I'd like to see Bradley go swinging for that one she chooses for the free ball especially when you got a little bit of a lead here now's your time be confident, go up and hammer that thing. We'll see if Dreama takes it, and she does. And that's what we're looking for, the assist from Caitlin DeWolf. You, you get those leads not very often, 10 points or so. That's your chance to just go up swing, try to make a play. And a nice job there off the hands of Malone. And Richard with the kill. Set point here and set number four. It'll be Schnitz on the ball. Good attack by Malone. And the Wolf did a great job to keep it alive, but Argus not able to get it back over. Now well, we're sitting right where we were last set, 24 to 13 with the Dragons on set point. It'll be Malone back to serve. She's had some moments tonight where she has rallied off a handful of serves on her own. Let's see if the Dragons can make quick work. And just like that, Malone will get the ace. She's kind of got a methodical approach to her serve as she kind of steps towards the net. I don't, not really a jump serve, but a kind of an aggressive, powerful serve just over, over the net. So it just kind of makes it look easy as she comes up, and it might be a little deceptive for us on the other side. 
But with that serve, it is right there at net level. She's just got to make sure it stays high enough. That one takes a little more arc as it goes over, and a good opportunity here. Sierra Smith, great set from the back row. Perfect location for Dreamer Richard to come through, and she gets the kill. And we will not switch sides here, as this is the fifth set. Both teams will stay where they're at. We should still have our three-minute break. The teams are going to stay where they're at. We'll have the captains come in for a coin toss to determine Uh, the captain's coming to determine the serve. Sorry, were you hitting a replay there? And I, I kind of was talking over it the whole time. No, no. We, we tried to do the, the replay, and, and it didn't, uh, didn't take didn't that take time. Didn't take it. All right. So we'll have the captains come together. They'll sort out. I believe it's going to be Washington's serve. So we're going to have our fifth set coming up. It'll be a... Race to 15 points. That's the part I got to remember. I was down in Rochester watching them play, and I mean, it was a good game. We got to 15, and all of a sudden they're shaking hands. I'm going, <laughs> what's going on? You know, I'm wanting more, I'm wanting more volleyball. <laughs> well, this set, or this uh, match in general has been everything we talked about. We talked about the JV being back and forth. That. Yes. Went three. That, that three, went three. Right? That went three. It's been a long night. I'm already kind of forgetting. Yeah. South, That's what led to our long night as well. South Bend took the first one, and Argus came back and took the next two. And so kind of the same thing here. Washington takes the first two. The Lady Dragons come back and take three and four. And it, it's no guarantee going into set five, uh, but you'd like to believe that we have the energy. We have the momentum as you go in. And, uh, again, if we can get that early lead. It might be a little interesting. I don't think we have any eligibility problems here with players. I don't think any of the ones we've seen on the court for most of the match tonight played any JV time. So no, I think they kept, uh, they kept Caitlin off the, all of the JV games, so, okay. cool. so she should be good for the night. Um, and I know uh, Cox played all three games, Okay. so I don't so know how many she would be allowed she, to play. She would be eligible if we need her. But we should be able to see our same lineup that we've seen much of the night. As both teams are kind of getting their final instructions before coming back out onto the floor. I think the key for us here in this fifth set is just going to be keep those serves in play. We've got the Panthers a little bit on their heels just by putting some pace on the serve making them have to make a play. They're getting a little bit unorganized defensively on their serve receive. And uh, Phil would love it if we could just get a couple more hard kills right into the ground. If we can't get a few more of those kills during this last set, this will be it. Does look like Washington will have the first serve of the night. Now it's gonna be a fairly late night for us and they're gonna have the 45 minute to an hour drive home. Yes, they do. So good night to be at home here for the Argus players. And it's going to be Reed opening up this fifth set and the Wolf set, uh, set is a two touch. So now that you're playing to 15, you know, these first five or six points become a lot more important than maybe they would in a 25-point set. That seven, eight-point mark is now your halfway point, and now it's one-to-one. -to -one. We've been at our best when we have served tonight, so I have an opportunity right here with Kendall Ferguson as Washington's going to make a sub with Jimenez checking back in at the front row. And that'll be an ace for Ferguson. We don't have exact stats as we're going along. We, we don't have that professional ability yet to be able to keep all those <laughs> stats and commentate a game, but 
I know that uh, Ferguson has had a few on the evening, entered with 27 on the season. So she's probably up in that 30 mark now. But I think, unfortunately, the last couple times she's had an ace, it's followed up by a service error. So yes. That's always kind of a bummer when that happens, kind of washes out that ace a little bit. You can tell she was, had, she was trying to head for that back corner because it was, it was wide open. And that's where you love to try to do that, but of course you run the risk a little. You get a couple boundary lines out there that make it a little bit harder to do. Good job by Ferguson to keep that set alive. It was a tricky pass to her, uh, but the wolf set or uh, attack catches the tape and falls back three to two. Advantage to Washington. Again, the be Schnitz, and there's that hole. It's been there. Whenever we can get that nice, tight set, Schnitz has plenty of time to look over the court. Just takes a little off, a little light swinging attack, and finds the hole in the court. And these are good games as we get ready for sectional play. You know, the kids are going to probably be a little bit nervous. I didn't think we had a touch here, but they claim we must have had a touch on this side. Argus didn't really react, and regardless, it's going to be Richard with the kill, the assist from Caitlin DeWolf. And as I was saying, these are good games as we head into sectional play to work through these tight sets as we're going to have a timeout by Washington. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break. You are watching Argus TV on RTC TV 4. First Federal Savings Bank has provided mortgage loans for over 50 years. We're now offering commercial loans to support our local businesses. We offer business loans for real estate, equipment, lines of credit, and investments. We also offer simply free business checking for all your banking needs. Contact Lindy Breeden, our business lending expert, to take the worry out of your business banking. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. All right, we're back. We have 12 seconds left in the uh, timeout. Uh, before, I, before I knew what was going on, the Washington coach, she was already halfway out on the court before she called timeout. <laughs> yeah, she was quick to get that one. She had some instructions for her team. I was saying before the break, uh, these close contests are going to be good going into sectionals. You get a little bit more of the jitters. It's senior night. We've got a good crowd still on hand down here to our right side. These close contests are going to be good for us. You're going to see the girls, I think, more than normal, take glances up to the scoreboard. But at the same time, you got to do your best to kind of keep that to the side. Just keep playing one point at a time, and it'll come. So we lead five to three. Schnitz just putting the ball in play. Phillips brings it over, and it's going to be Coleman just having to play the free ball. Unable to do anything with it. Just a little late to react. Those are the moments we got to try to limit here as each point becomes a little bit more important. Washington gives us a free ball. We need to take advantage. The Wolf is able to track it through the rafters, and Schnitz will play the free ball to the Washington side. Scott with the attack, and she finds the middle of the floor, much like we've done ourselves. Malone is back to serve. This is a rotation we need to work hard to get out of. This has been a successful rotation for Washington throughout the night. Sometimes you just get in those spots where it's a good rotation for them. Maybe it's not a solid rotation for us. And we're going to try a substitution, mix things up. It'll be Sam Rose coming onto the floor. Malone with that line drive serve, usually just over the net. Just like that, she generated a little topspin on that one and dropped it right down the middle of the floor. See if Argus can adjust positionally here. She hasn't hit too many serves extremely deep. She is scanning the floor, I think looking to hit a different spot this time around, and instead, <laughs> Karen's off her own teammate's elbow. That's yes. always a surprise, right? <laughs> and you don't see that I coming. Think, I think she was kind of surprised about that as well. <laughs> you know, at the net, you're obviously just Stand there, hands up. You don't know what's coming in. 
it happens. But that was a service error that we much needed and hopefully get Washington out of that rotation and Malone will go take a breather. Bradley's pass finds Ferguson, Grohaus. Nice flip of the wrist. Washington will miscommunication there. That's gonna be four touches and a point to the Lady Dragons. Seven to seven, we're about halfway through. Set number five, it's been a tight set here in this final deciding set. That's two touches on the set. That pass just leading Jimenez a little too tight to the net, unable to get a clean set on it. And we're gonna see a substitution, in fact, one that I don't even have on our roster. This will be her first time into the game. Perhaps this is a JV what? substitution even. And I don't have numbers on their roster to help out anymore, but <laughs> she's gonna come in and have the bump set right off the bat. And it's gonna be Richard there to meet it at the net. Well timed. You can just see Richard's eyes kind of light up a little bit. When that set's tight to the net, she knows. I'm so now I'm going earlier. Because her hand, her hand was clearly folded over, over the net. Now earlier, didn't they call? Earlier, I believe we had a moment where our setter had broke the plane of the net okay. by jumping at the front row, which she cannot do. And that was mostly because we had a pass that led the setter pretty high. She didn't want to do it. She was doing all she could to keep it alive. Uh, Dreamer is perfectly good to do that there as long as there's no contact into the net. That's that's what you're looking for. Just a nice block on the third, third uh, attempt by Washington. And a serve error by the Panthers. They've had a few of those in these last few sets. More than a few, they've had a handful. It's definitely given us some free points. Caitlin DeWolf serve, finds the middle floor, and now Schnitz has to come find it, and DeWolf is all over the place. Finds her senior sister. And Washington unable to get any offense going. Free ball finds the net, and the Dragons sit four points away. Again, this is where we just got to relax. I know they're going to start looking at that scoreboard. I am kind of surprised. I mean, it, it's it's somewhat loud in here, but it's nowhere it's close to what that what, JV right? game was. <laughs> Maybe we'll get it here if we can rally off a couple more, get within a point or two. Well done. That's coming up towards us, Phil. I was going to keep it. <laughs> that was well done by Washington. That was a nice attack. One of the better attacks they've had in the last few sets. As Cleveland comes back onto the floor in place of Adkins. It'll be the senior defensive specialist, Diamond Coleman, back to serve. Short serve. Richard. Schnitz and now Grohaus opening on that side, but a little too far as it's out of bounds, and we are 11-10. Get a quick side out here, make a big difference, have that two-point lead with three to go. Got to relax, make a play. Kaylin able to get her feet underneath. Well done, Kendall. Phillips trying to send it back over the back row, but the Wolf is able to cover. And I thought Grohaus was going to get one, but that was Phillips, I believe, defensively for Washington. She's been a great player for them all night. Able to send it back, and Maddie Williams just not quite able to dig that one up. Great effort on her part. Stuck in a little rotation here to see if we can break out of it. Washington helps us out with an attack here, with an attack here there, and it would be 12-11. Dreamer Richard has been one of our more solid servers tonight. This is a great rotation and opportunity here for the Dragons. See if she can keep things going. Oh. Fortunately, the serve does find the middle of the net. Yeah, it's a nail biter. We're, we're right down to the right down to the wire here. We're down to the final, potentially final three points. Got to shake that off. Get a side out. Just got to relax, make our plays. Phillips with the dig. Malone plays the free ball over. Opportunity here for the Dragon Schnitz. I like this setup, but a good read by Jimenez, and it'll be Malone coming back. I think next time you're going to see if Schnitz gets that opportunity, she's going to go swing in a little more on the next one. And 
Dragons set air will send it over to the Lady Dragons. Washington starting to get back into that cover in the middle of the floor again. I think we're going to find an opportunity to tip wide or swing wide if we need to. But Maddie DeWolf is going to get the ace, and that's a big point for the Lady Dragons here late in the fifth set. This will set them up for match point, triple match point, if you want to use your tennis terms. <laughs> hey, I'm going there, Steve. I'm going there. We get three points to play with. <laughs> I'm just making stuff up at this point, all right? <laughs> Double match point if I actually probably do my math a little better. Opportunity here. It's going to be Richard. Kayla with the back set. Two touch. Oh. <laughs> probably would have liked to have seen her just going to Schnitz there in the middle of the floor. But we're still going to have an opportunity here. It's first going to begin with Trendy McWilliams. I'm hoping for a serve in the net. We'll take it. It's going to start with her, but the Dragons will get a chance to win it right here. Good serve, but it's looked good, but it's long. Well done by Dreamer Richards and Maddie Williams to track it, and that will be the match. The Lady Dragons come back from down 2 to nothing to win three sets in a row. I believe we have three sets tonight determined by two points. 26-24, 25-23, 25-13. We're going for memory here. 25, around 13 again, and 15-13. Yep, so. yep. Woo. So as as the uh, what we're planning on or what we're hoping to do is uh, now that the games are over, um, since it is senior night, um, I know we started off the season. We went ahead and brought up one of the seniors and, and interviewed them a little bit. We're gonna try to bring them all up here and uh, uh, you know do a quick interview, maybe with all of them or, or one at a time. Get a question you know, or get them for each one and and uh, see how it goes. So we're gonna take a couple of. Uh, commercial breaks and then uh, see if we can't get them up here to uh, to get that taken care of. So we will be back shortly. You are watching Argus TV on RTC TV 4. First Federal Co Savings Bank has provided, provided mortgage like loans for over 50 well, years. We are. We're now we offering Co commercial Lines loans to support our local businesses. We offer business You're loans for real estate, equipment, lines of credit, and, and investments. We also offer simply Not free contest. business checking for all your banking needs. Contact Lindy Breeden, our business lending expert, to take the worry out of your business banking. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. First Federal Savings Bank has provided mortgage loans for over 50 years. We're now offering commercial loans to support our local businesses. We offer business loans for real estate, equipment, lines of credit, and investments. We also offer simply free business checking for all your banking needs. Contact Lindy Breeden, our business lending expert, to take the worry out of your business banking. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. here at the Phil Waybright Gymnasium where the Argus Lady Dragons just defeated the South Bend Washington Panthers. Yeah. Uh, it took me a while to remember who they were. Uh, we, uh, we're, we're joined here with uh, Kaylee Bradley, senior for the Argus <laughs> Dragons. Does it sound like I'm getting choked up? No. Oh, okay. That's good. <laughs> Oh, uh, took a look. You got you got more fans behind you. You got anybody watching out there? You don't know if you got anybody watching? No. Why not? Smiling. Cousin wants to talk to you. <laughs> you know now now uh, uh, I know you from playing softball. 
Yeah. And and, uh, and this was my first year of really coming in and watching the uh, uh, volleyball team play. But tell me over the last four years, what's it felt like? Good. Good? Yeah. That's it? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So with this being your last night, how are you feeling about going forward now? Um, I don't know. It's going to be weird not playing. Yeah? Now you're going to school? Yeah. Where are you going to go to school at? Uh, I got accepted into Southwestern Michigan. Southwestern Michigan. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you go talk to their coach about uh, playing not volleyball? Yet. No? no. You going to go talk to him? Maybe. Maybe? <laughs> you can at least get into intramurals. <laughs> So with the you had four you had four seniors were you guys all close? Yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. along. I know one of them's my neighbor. We we <laughs> interviewed her the very first game. So I don't know. Maybe we'll get with her tonight or not. So uh, uh, as you can tell, this is my first interview, uh, <laughs> first interview time timing on all this. Yeah. So I'm not a hundred percent sure on what all <laughs> questions to ask. So go through your whole season. Tell me what it was like to uh, to play. Um, very exciting. Like, at the beginning of the season, we had, uh, like, eliminations for, like, JV and varsity. And I thought the whole entire time, oh, yeah, I'm not going to make it, but I made it. You were worried that you weren't going to make it, make the varsity? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, sometimes that little extra nervousness puts the effort in, extra yeah. effort in to, uh, to uh, get you into that position. Yeah. As you as you are well aware in the other sports that you played. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, is there anything else you want to tell everybody? Always play with 101 percent. 101. Yeah. That's it. Yep. Only 101. What <laughs> happened to the whole 110? Um. That's what I used to tell you all the time. 110. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just limit it there. Okay. But just make sure that you leave whatever whatever when you walk off that court. Just make sure that you left it all out on the court. Yeah. That's the big thing. So, all right. Well, everybody, wave wave uh, goodbye to everybody. And uh, that is Kaylee Bradley, senior. Now we are being joined with uh, Maddie DeWolf. Were you thinking I was going to call you uh, uh, Caitlin or Hallie? Actually, Caitlin got called Maddie tonight. She so. did. Yeah, she did. Well, I don't know. Is that that could be that could be uh, a bonus for your area? Yeah, so. I know. Tell me about it. But since we're since we're on Caitlin, what is it like you as a senior with your sister playing with you as a freshman? She amazes me. I cannot believe she is so good. And I think she's going to do amazing when she's a senior. I mean, she's really going to build as she goes through high school. And she's already has so much talent and skill. And all she does is put her best into every game. And I've, I couldn't be prouder of her. Well, that's good. That's good. I know that, uh, I know that when uh, Ashley and Caitlin, you know, right there at that rivalry rage, they didn't get along so well. <laughs> so do you guys get along pretty good out on we the field? We do. We get along really well. All right. All right. I know, now I know mo- you mostly from, from going to church with me. Yeah. So I'm going to see you again this Sunday? Yes, you will. All right. <laughs> well, we're going to go ahead and now how is the rest of this, the whole season going all four years? What's it been like? It's very bittersweet. Um, it's been a lot of hard work. And I think from the beginning, from a school that is mostly soccer related. Oh, yes. It's hard to build up a, like, it's hard for them to see that even though we don't have a winning season, it's a winning season for us because even though we may not win the game, we won a few matches, or we won against a team that we never thought we could beat. So I remember we beat North Mi- we beat won a match against North Miami. We took them to four games, and I just straight up cried because my freshman year, I was terrified of them. The entire varsity was terrified of them because <laughs> they're so tall and so talented. And so when we got put up against them, we just had to be scrappy and played our best. And so when we finally won that match against them, it just felt like all the hard work finally paid off. Well, that's good. That's good. Now, here's a big question for you. Do you have anybody that you know of that might be watching? I don't know. Just say hi to everybody. Just say hi to everybody. Hello, Hello. everybody. (laughs) Because you got somebody over here videotaping you. And I think your dad was over here video. Now he's over here. He's getting ready to take a picture. (laughs) I know. My entire family is just watching me (laughs) on the other side. Well, now, now you have to tell them, hey, why don't you go on to 
uh, our, the Argus TV channel on RTC TV 4. I know. And that way you can tell them to, uh, to watch the game then. I'll tell everyone. There you go. To watch the game. And then All we'll right. <laughs> well, this is Maddie DeWolf. It's not Caitlin DeWolf, and it is not <laughs> Hallie DeWolf. So, but all, I know all, th all three of them do play sports. Well, Hallie tried until she kept breaking everything. She kept breaking everything. She was so unfortunate. So, <laughs> but uh, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, say goodnight to, to Maddie. And then, oh, we have Kendall coming up. Yeah, you have Kendall. So uh, good luck with that. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Well, you have a good night. You too. Thank you. You got them on backwards. Do I really? Yes, you do. <laughs> Boy, do you look silly. Thank you. All right. You got it? Yeah. Okay. You said you got a sore throat? You yes. sound like a man? Yes. Well, when's that any different than any other? <laughs> That's not nice. All right. So we are now talking with Kendall Ferguson, who is my neighbor. <laughs> so you were the first one that you, you were actually the only one that we interviewed the whole year. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't the fact that we wanted, didn't want to interview anybody else. <laughs> it's just it kind of tough when it, it seemed like every time we were here, the games just didn't go very well. Yeah. So it was, uh, but tonight, mm -hmm. what a way to go and end the season. Yeah, really. Senior night, and I know we've already talked about what your, now, we talked earlier in the first game what your <laughs> season was going to be like. How do you feel tonight? Awesome. That's that was it? the just best awesome? way to end our last home game. Okay. What are you going to do after this? We well, still we have two-thirds of the school year left. Yeah. Going to go cheerleading? No. Basketball? Mm -mm. I'll no. probably do nothing. Nothing? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, what's the new sport? Uh, lacrosse? I'm not tough enough. Softball? <laughs> I know you would like that. Oh, I'd love, <laughs> you know, I'd love to have every girl play softball. So do you know of anybody that's out there watching you right now? I think my grandma still is. You want to say hi? Hi. Way better. <laughs> All right. Now, we've, we've interviewed Kendall before, so we're going to go ahead and let her go so that we can get the last one up here. <laughs> and uh, um, she looks a little more nervous. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> She's shaking. <laughs> Thank you. Remember, remember, Kendall, softball. Softball. I'll think about it. All right. Did you get it on right? I think so. All right. Well, you're one step ahead of Kendall. She didn't. She had okay. it on backwards, looking at the back of her head. Okay. <laughs> now, we are with Dreama Richards, correct? No S. Dreama Richard? Yes. All right. This is a player that I knew all the rest of them. I don't know you. You don't know me? I don't know you. How long have you been, have you been in Argus all along, the whole time? Yeah. From K through 12? No. No? When Since did you like 8th grade. 8th grade on. Okay, yeah. so junior high. Look at that. They're making fun of you over there. I know. They always do. <laughs> so uh, first question is, Is do you have anybody that you know of that might be watching you? No. No? Go no. say hi anyways. Hey. Oh, see, now you can actually see yourself. My mom might say hi. Your mom might yeah. say hi? Yeah. She's not here Maybe tonight? Maybe she's watching. No, she just left. She just, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So she might just wasn't getting enough volleyball, so she might go in there and watch the rest of this, huh? Yeah. Okay. So next question, senior night. What a way to end. Now, I don't know. Probably Zach and I, if we were to put it down on paper, as far as MVP, MVP for the night, would probably be you. Me? Killer serves. And then I loved, we actually did an instant replay with the one bash that you just drove it right in the ground. I yeah. don't even remember. Well, that's because you did so many of them. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's, it's volleyball. I don't get to, my kids, my kids are gone, and so I don't get to, I never got to watch because they always went to the sport outside. So this is my first year watching volleyball, and I love it when, when the flames are coming out the back of the ball, especially when, when the player is getting caught off guard and takes it off the nose, which is what you've done a lot of, Yeah. Put, putting it down into there. So tell me a little bit about what this season's meant to you. What this season's meant to me? Yes. It's meant a lot. It's done a lot of great things. 
like pushed me forward because I want to play in college. Okay. So yeah. Where are you going to college at? Grace. Grace. Have you already gone to talk to their coach? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. What did they I'm say? I'm not for sure like playing with them. What did they say? They said they'd watch film and stuff and get okay. back with me. So you're gonna try to do a walk on? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why not? Oh, okay. Uh, Steve, the uh, athletic, the uh, he's the athletic director for RTC. He's pointing. He says we gotta get the coach on too. Oh, I got gotcha. you. So, the uh, um, so with tonight being being the what last a, game, is and probably the best. as far as I'm concerned, and, and Zach's concerned, MVP. We'll give you the MVP because, like I said, when you were up to serve, we knew that we were going to be getting quite a few points, especially with that fourth set yeah. where you were starting to rack them up and we were going five up, five six up. up, seven up. I mean, I think at one point in time you guys were up like 11 points and you were still it was serving. eight, yeah. And you were still serving. You know, not, not too many of the other players were doing that. And then to come up on the front line and just sit there and just hit them hard, um, I know that you have – you have you that's doing a lot of the, what is it called, kills? Yeah. They're calling them kills. Yeah. So I'm learning all this stuff. And then um, um, the other tall girl. Sierra. I Sierra, yes. You know, I can always tell when one of you, when one of you, there's always one of you guys in the front row. Yeah, because we have just to Just for that reason. Well, I just figure it's because you're tall. <laughs> Should be playing basketball too, shouldn't you? No. No, no don't like that sport? Nope. <laughs> uh, how about softball? Nope. Why not? I don't like it. Why not? I don't know. It's that's, just that's, not my type. That's, that's hurtful. I'm the softball coach. That's Maybe hurtful. I'll play this year okay. for you. All right. All right. Well, go ahead and go ahead and wave to anybody that say, hey, Mom. Hey, you know, Mom. If you didn't see this, you know, <laughs> she missed out. And well, then we're going to go ahead and, and get your coach on. All should, right. Should we bring – stick around here. We'll see if she kind of agrees with what Zach and I agree with. Okay. You have to come over here. You got to get it. Are we in, are we in the shot? Yes. Okay. Now, Zach and I were wa we're we're watching the whole game, mm -hmm. and I don't know what your thoughts were, but we kind of made an executive decision that if you didn't give it out, you better go ahead and do it. But we claimed her as the MVP for the game. She had some awesome certain hits. She was rocking that net. She was she was doing a lot of. Oh oh wait wait sorry. Oh, you can't See, hear her. Should I leave? <laughs> Well, it's up to you. We're talking about you. I'll just stand right here. Okay. Well, I'm going to sit here now. Do I look good? <laughs> She's starting to get into this now. I think all of her nerves are gone. <laughs> now I can call her. Yeah, yes. no, she was definitely, she had some killer serves out there. I really wanted a uh, radar gun out there to see how fast in that third set, how fast her serves were going because well, they were flying Zach, over the net. And you can even ask Steve because I think he put the earmuffs on just so that way he could hear it. I <laughs> thought I saw flames coming out the back of the ball on that one. And we did do an instant replay of it, which we set it up a little different tonight. Mm -hmm. Normally we get the referee. Every time we do an instant, re uh, instant replay of a good play, we get the back of the referee. <laughs> and it's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Well, then we did one, and it was a good one. It was. So, well, dream, dream is going by. <laughs> <laughs> She's ready to go. So, um, way to end the season. It is. Still got two more games in sectionals, though, so it's not quite over uh, yet. It, okay. <laughs> way to end the regular season. Now you're going into postseason. Yep. Um, with this, this should, this should carry you in to help you mm -hmm. get started. Yep. When do you start your first postseason game? Um, next Thursday will be our game against West Central. Okay. Um, no, I didn't. I didn't see it. How'd you guys do against them during regular season? We actually don't play them during regular season. Really? So they, yeah, we have two teams um, in our sectionals that we don't play: Lacrosse, who's going to play OD, and then we play West Central. So okay. um, we've looked at Max Prep just to kind of see where they're at. I think it's definitely a winnable game. Um, so we're excited about it. Uh, we still have two more games this week. We have OD on Wednesday for us to play. Okay. And then we have South Bend Career Academy on Friday. So got a couple games to finish up, and then we're going to be focusing hard on our game for sectionals. And, and I w I'm going to just assume that OD should be another W. They should be, yes. They graduated a lot of seniors last year, and if, if we play well, we should definitely beat them. And definitely, I don't want to say, I don't want to jinx it or anything, but South Bend Career Academy oh, yeah. should. Uh, that should definitely be a W. I know that they are a school. O that OD is might trying. be a little bit more of a, I feel like, evenly matched game, but I think we so could like win. So, like tonight? It. Yeah. Oh, tonight, I, you know, I was, I was telling Zach, I said, you know, I, I, if even if you guys would have lost, 
it was worth the money to come out. <laughs> it was definitely a very exciting game. We kept the scores close at the beginning when we lost to them. And then we just, we kind of just talked to the girls and said, okay, like, you guys are acting like you want to win this. Like, you're playing, but you're not, you're not playing with passion right now. Right. And it was exciting to see those next two games that we played that we kept it 25, 12, 25. We kept it down lower. And it's like, see, this is how we can play um, when we play to the best of our ability. So Going, going into set number four, you know, we were, we were sitting there talking and going, okay, they've played three long games. Do they have the gas to keep it going? Mm -hmm. And it was impressive. It was, it, impressive. it was because I wouldn't say in the past that we've been a five-team win we get tired, we get exhausted. And yep. so to see the girls still have that energy um, and that enthusiasm to keep going and that drive, it was amazing. Um, so definitely very proud of them. Um, fighting through, we, we encouraged each other and supported each other even when we lost. Uh, we didn't have conflict on the court, which is always a bonus and a plus. So uh, I was very proud of them tonight and just their effort that they put forth and just their attitudes for the whole game. Now, we were going through uh, senior night, mm -hmm. and Zach was reminiscing <laughs> about his, uh, you know, wishing that he could be back down there. And I did tell him, I said, you know, 13 years from now, and he will be walking across that field or across <laughs> the court or the field or whatever. How, how is that, how's that going for you right now? With thinking in the future? Yes. Well, our poor kid's going to have to make a decision because <laughs> I, I played soccer and volleyball, so... They're definitely going to be playing lots of sports, oh, <laughs> and we'll boy. definitely just have them choosing whatever they do. Um, I probably won't be a vocal parent. I will say that I'll probably enjoy my role as a parent and not a coach. <laughs> 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 I'll leave that up to the coaches. But um, yeah, it's it's definitely hard. It, I try had to try to keep my composure because a lot of these girls I've had for four years. Yep, and so. It gets very emotional and be like, okay, we got a game still to play. Yep. And so I don't think it's quite hit me yet. Usually when we get to sectionals is when it hits me that, you now, know. Now, did you, have, did you have to have a tissue out there? I did not this time. I, I, I tried to, I guess because they didn't have the mic on, so I couldn't hear very well. So that kind of helped that I, I couldn't hear all their stories and all the things that they were talking about. So um, I think I did get a little bit teary-eyed, but it wasn't, it wasn't terrible. I'm kind of. I, as it gets closer to the end, I think it's just going to get more real because um, yeah. the girls mean a lot, the relationships that we built, and to see how much they've improved. And what's the, what's the first game? What's the date of your first game for sectional? First sectional, Thursday. it is Thursday. So is that the 17th? I think it's the 17th. Okay, so next week. When yeah. you're talking Thursday, I'm right now I'm in the no, framework of this week. No, not this week, this Thursday. Week. Next week, Thursday, <laughs> yep. Okay, so they have two games left. Uh, against Oregon Davis and against South Bend Career Academy. Mm -hmm. um, both very winnable games. Um, so I just encourage everybody to, to come out and support the Lady Dragons on the volleyball court at their first sectional game. And you're down at what, West Central? Yes, West Central. Okay. Um, and maybe we'll have some more information as, uh, as that's coming. The, uh, we're trying to, tonight we had the the one crew up here and we had another crew out on the soccer field broadcasting that and we're trying to keep everybody in the loop of what yep. all's going on everywhere um and so we will try to continue to do that as we're out there broadcasting the uh the soccer sectionals from here so from all of us here at the eugene's you know nope. oh, wrong Wainwright. thing phil phil Wainwright. Wainwright. <laughs> you see you can tell i've been doing soccer <laughs> uh from the phil waybright gymnasium where the Argus Lady Dragons defeated the South Bend Washington Panthers. Uh, I am Phil Dean, and for Zach Schaefer and Steve Stricker, the athletic director of RTC, we bid everybody a good night. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that wasn't that bad, because that was my first actual interview stuff.